You're listening to the Hello Well with Danielle show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and travel related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle Washington, and I'm so happy to have you here. If you are new, welcome to the crew. Thank you for being part of the family. And if you are been here and you've been rocking with us for the last couple episodes, I hello appreciate you. Just know that I'm grateful for you. And this week is part of our month long series in the month of December. So if you heard last week, we're kicking it off in the month of December with a month-long series called Awaken to You. And this month-long series is to really help you become intentional and really focus on being intentionally aware of what's going on in your life. You know, in the month of December, we're already in that mindset. We're thinking about like, what did I do? What did I not do? Did I accomplish my goals? What am I looking for the next year? And when you're, you know, we want to get somewhere. We always say new year, new me, but it really is new year, old me. When you aren't really knowing where you are, it's really hard to make the changes that you want to get to where you want to be. And so this month is a month long series. So each week will be a different topic, just helping you move along and be intentional about getting yourself set up to thrive and not just survive in 2021. We've been surviving for years. It is time for us as women of color to survive. And this week's topic is such a bomb topic for me. Uh, We're talking about super being a superwoman and superpowers. And I have the most amazing gifted Jatia Jones with us, who's fondly known as the natural networker. And she helps develop and promote programs and services that enhance personal development, safety, acceptability, and community sustainability. She's also the founder of Four Teens Inc. and Jatia Jones Consulting. I know her in the capacity of Jatia Jones Consulting where she was a clarity coach for this group coaching program I was a part of. And she is just, she just has a gift. She has a gift of really helping people get clear who they are, what they do, and how to effectively transition their visions, dreams, and their goals into reality. And just, you know, the clarity, she makes things that seem so complex, seem so easy. And today's topic is one of those great ones for me. Like we always talk about having superpowers, you know, superwoman cape, and we're all superwomen. And there's negative and positive about superwomen. And we talk about that in this episode. And in this episode, we really dive into, you know, the ideal of wearing the cape 24 seven and, you know, burning out. And what does that mean? And, you know, getting caught up in the idea that we always have to wear it and forgetting that there's power in our normal selves if we know how to utilize it. So I'm looking forward to this topic. Again, it is sponsored this week by us. Hello with Danielle. If you haven't been paying attention, we also just released our Redefine Mindset 21 Day Self-Care Journal, which is a 21 days to help you really get focused again and, you know, kind of push you along with journal prompts. So there's 21 days of journal prompts. In addition, I personally have like what I call the inner mean girl that kicks in all the time, also known as negative talk. And so I also added in a worksheet to help you check your inner mean girl and will help you kind of work on that negative self-talk. So if you are listening today and into the month of December, uh, sorry, December 31st, I'm actually offering for anyone who buys the 21 day self-care journal, the redefined mindset journal, you'll also get our morning and evening routines ebook along with that to just really help you. Again, I really want us to be thriving in 2021. So let's get this going. Thank you so much, Jatia, for joining me. I'm so happy to have you here on the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. How are you doing today? I am pretty good, ma'am. I'm excited to be here. I absolutely love your podcast. Oh, you are amazing. I have such a crush on you. Not like a girl crush because I, I know I like my men, but just as you as a person, girl, I'm I like, love I love, love, love you. And I'm super excited to talk to you about this topic today. Because I think it's like, I say this is all the time, but it's important. And like this superwoman cape situation and, and just being a superwoman, it's powerful, but it is also just as detrimental if you don't know how 
to maximize the cape and when you need to put it down. That's, that is more than that. And so for me, I want to ask you, like, how would you describe what it means to be a superwoman? I feel like it has been normalized, so to speak, just within the gender in general, not even on a race aspect, but that as women, we are raised to be responsible for everybody else. It's just kind of expected. I feel like we hold this burden on our shoulders that one, we have to be better than perfect, mm-hmm. nine, ten, whatever that definition definition is for you. And then on top of that, it's you have to do that for everybody else. Like you have to present and show up for everyone else at that same level and standard. And that turns into this cape, which turns into our identity sometimes where we don't know how to put us first and put our oxygen mask on first because we're so trained to show up for everybody else first. Yeah. And I feel like if it comes back all the way to slavery, if you think about it, you know, you think about, especially in the Black community as a Black woman, you know, the men were sold off in different locations and women were meant to raise, make babies raise the babies and do everything else. And so they literally were taught to be, okay, if there's no family, I am the source. And so I have to be there for everything. I have to be the rock for everyone. And I think it's actually ingrained into our DNA, not in in, in terms of society and what we're taught as kids. We're taught as women like, oh, you need to be strong. Like, God forbid you cry. God forbid you can't do everything. You need to show. And then even if you talk, take it to a work level, we're taught oh, for you to succeed in corporate world or any world, you have to be 10 times better than the next one just to be deemed average. And so we're just trained in every aspect of our life that you have to be a superwoman. There's no choice between it. It's it's congratulations. You've been scholar led S for superwoman. And you must be that woman. And that's a lot. It's a whole lot. Even, um, I do not remember this minister's name, but Gary Gray or something. And there was a whole talk show about how his woman was his ride or die. And then there was a whole like plethora of why do we have to wear the stripes in order to get the award, you know? Yes, girl. (laughs) I just feel like it's so, one, unfair. And two, it really puts shackles on infinite on us as women throughout life and cycles yeah. us. So yeah, it's a whole lot. So what would you say is your superwoman story? I think that we all have one, whether we realize it or not, but like how would you describe your superwoman story? And it sounds like you have aha the moment to know that you don't have to constantly wear the cape. Exactly. So my superwoman cape comes in I'm the oldest and the youngest is the boy right I feel like this is like the core of where the story really starts and it's more than the you have to watch out for you have to take care of it's like, well, did you do that for them? Are they not able-bodied right now? Like, who me? <laughs> what the world? So it led to this real independence. Like, I don't need anybody. I can do it on my own, even when I know I feel and feel like I need somebody and I need help not knowing how to ask for help. Like, struggling, whether it's to rob Peter to pay Paul or credit card debt or just figuring it out on my own, which took, you know, light years off of me getting to a goal, which I could have gotten to a lot faster. So it was just all compounded in you got to show up for everybody else. And you are the very last one if you have any energy left. And so I found myself at a point where I was dedicated to someone's birthday and said I was coming and I was dog tired like I was like you did give me permission I was like fuck this <laughs> tired like I know I and I had like this laundry list of everything else that I had to do that was truly important for me and I was like but Jatia you said you were gonna go and did it and I try to be a 
woman of my word. And I laid in my bed and I said, okay, if you die tomorrow, would you be happy with the decision to go to this party? Or would you be happy with just laying here in this bed and getting some rest so you can do for you? And like, that was the beginning of my aha moment to start to put my oxygen mask on first. And then I realized this feels good, but it didn't come without feeling guilty that I went back on my word, feeling guilty that I wasn't showing up for these people that I love and care for some, which would show up for me, some who would not show up for me, but my standard for myself as a friend and or family member or whatever gave me extra gray hair just by feeling guilty. But once I got over that part, I was like, girl, you got energy. Look at you. You're checking stuff off your own to-do list. Well, check you out. Like, ah, girl, I love you for that. <laughs> you pat your own self on the back. Okay, let's go, you know? So that was my aha moment. But that cake got heavy. And it can get heavy. Like in my own experience, I go with the story that from childhood, I was taught I was meant to serve. I was meant to serve and and be invisible. Like I, my parents come from the space of your children are meant to be seen, not heard. Yes. So for them, it was, they added on, you're meant to serve, be seen, but not heard. So don't ask for grace. Don't ask for rewards. Don't look for praise. We just need you to serve in silence and be happy about it. Because God forbid we want to see an attitude on your face, even if we told you not to say anything either. And that childhood mentality went through to adulthood. I'm reading this great book. I don't know if you've ever read it. Um, and I will botch the think the author's name is Lisa Gibson. I could be wrong, but I know the book is Adult Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. That's good. I gotta look that up. Girlfriend, that book gave me life. You know when you read something, because I've been listening on Audible and while as I do my walks, I'm in the streets like, oh girl, yes. Ah, oh, uh-huh. Like I'm like high fiving and like, yes, girl, yes. Out loud. People walk by, they're like, what? Huh? But it's been so good. But it it goes back to this thing that she talks about healing fantasies. And you know, as children, we learn to cope with needing to be a certain way and, you know, giving, giving, giving to help, you know, a parents who are, if you are, are a child of emotionally immature parents. And for me, my thing has always been, okay, you need to give to for people to love you. Like if, if only I can serve enough, I can show that I'm valuable. If only I can be there for everyone. Someone will say, oh my God, I see you, Danielle. And it took me to get through some internal work to figure out that, oh, wait, this is my narrative I told myself since as a child. And that got me through as a child to get through, which was great because I needed, you know, coping mechanisms to get through. But these coping mechanisms from my childhood are not serving me or no longer serving me as an adult. But I had to be aware. And for me to get to aware, I had to have my breakdown moment. Like for me, it was 2000, it was into 2018 and I was now with the sixth person that I knew had just passed away from me in one year. And it was a major one because the sixth one was my cousin who was my everything. She was my rock. She was my mother. She was my therapist. She was my girl, you doing this wrong intervention. She was everything. But like, and I was caregiving for her and she was a matriarch of our family as well. And I felt pain and I felt grief. But the superwoman inside of me is like, Mm-mm, you don't have time for that. You're meant to serve. You're meant to be serving and indivis- in being invisible. So I couldn't grieve. Like I literally, I've never walked out of a funeral before, but like, because I was helping organize the funeral and like making sure everyone else was okay. I was like, how dare you cry in the funeral? Like you're meant to make sure everything's running right. Everything's on time. People get from one place to the next place. That's not your role. Your role isn't to grieve. So I literally walked out and fell on the ground because I couldn't feel comfortable as a superwoman to cry in the church. And the story goes on further and further. But long story short is the fact that I wasn't able to allow myself time to grieve because I'm like, I'm too, I'm strong. I'm strong. 
I'm supposed to be doing all these things as a strong black woman. I'm supposed to be there for everyone else. And I crashed and burned to the point where people were like, sis, I'm going to need you to take a break because you're grieving. You're acting a fool in these streets and you are not seeing it. But I think as strong black women, we seem like, what are you talking about? I'm just doing what I'm meant to be doing. So like, how do people understand, A, what is their cape and how it's affecting their life? You just said a whole word, a whole word. And I think the hashtag needs to be, I don't have time for this because yes. <laughs> you made me realize how much I say that. Like legit, I'll be like, Tia, we don't have time for this. You don't have time to cry. You don't have time to be tired. You don't have time for this. So thank you for that. But to your question, how do you identify what your cape is? I always ask myself like a few different questions and it's like your wish list. Like who did you wish you had to come and do X, Y, and Z for you that you trusted enough to let your guard down, right? Mm-hmm. So who who is it? And I use those words strategically because trust is big for me. Like half of the time I'm like, I know I can do it better than them. So let me just go ahead and already do it, right? Because we don't have time for this. We don't have time to redo it. You don't have time to someone to mess it up. And you know, if you do it, it's going to be right. But, exactly. you know, trust is key. I, I hear you on that one. And a lot of times we don't feel like we have these people around us already which is why we're so adamant about wearing these capes, right? Yeah. This, which is why we don't put our guard down, which leads to a whole host of different things other than gray hair, but like health issues, right? I mean, gray hair is bad enough by itself. But so who is on this wish list? Who do you wish you had that you could truly trust to do X, Y, and Z for you so that you can let your guard down? So then you can identify one with X, Y, and Z are, because those are the areas that you wear your cape in the most, right? So for me, it was showing up. I would, I wish I had a doppelganger that looked like me, act like me, talk like me to go do X, Y, and Z, whether that was with friends, family, and work. Like those were my three areas, right? And so then the next thing would be, what do you feel you need? Money was always one for me. I wish I had more money to do. And so then after I looked at that, okay, well, Jatia, what is taking all of your money? Because I never really had a budget until a certain time in life. And it was like, okay, you're shopping when you feel X, Y, and Z to that's the space you would feel comfortable enough in to quote unquote, let your guard down or replenish your spirit, but you're still doing more of a detriment to yourself because you wish you had the money so you could do X, Y, and Z, but now you're spending it to make yourself feel better, right? Yep. And so many people do that. It was a learned behavior. (laughs) My mother's still, I'm like, we we don't need this. And she's like, it's only $10. I'm like, $10 that could go to this, right? But so, you know, the who do you wish you had and what do you wish you had? And why? And so once you actually are able to articulate why you need these things, then you can start to articulate to yourself for one, but to others for two, how they can actually show up for you. Because we have friends that know we're the strong friend and they want to show up for us, but you're the strong friend. So it's like, but if we could truly articulate, like, I really need this because of this. And this is just in one of my examples. So a lot of my friends would be like, Jatia, just go get a hotel room and lock yourself in there for the weekend and relax. And I'm like, you don't understand that that stresses me out more because I can't get stuff done. And I know after me being still for two seconds, stuff is piled up. Whereas if I just take off work and lock myself in my house, doing the work makes me feel better. It reduces the stress, but they couldn't identify that because they really just wanted to be home, whether it was from kids and husbands and, you know, and I'm like, no, I need to get stuff off my plate. Right now. And being able to articulate that led them to say, well, how can I help you get some of this stuff off your plate? Now, did I have an answer for them right away? No. But it then led me to think of, okay, now we need to focus on how we can Tell people how to help us. And that's a great point because I we often 
want help. We're afraid to ask because we don't trust. And I think even figuring out how to trust to even figure out who are the people that we want to be able to say that we trust and put in those spots. But at the same time, it's just, it's a lot. And even the idea of giving up control to something. (laughs) It's like, ooh, honey, I'm like, uh, I want to, but I'm afraid afraid to so it's like this this push and pull internally to the point where it's like okay I feel comfortable in taking it on because again that's my role so then I get to still keep the badge the badge of honor of I am a strong black woman who could do it all I may be having a high blood pressure I may get cancer. I may get all these. I may have, you know, be overeating because I'm stressed. I'm eating out of stress. My I may be losing my hair. So then I'm buying more products and all these other things. But I'm still a, a strong black woman. Right. And a lot of times we do it out of defense for protection. Yeah. It's like, I know at least for me, it's I'm protecting myself from hurt. I'm protecting myself from disappointment in myself. Because, Jatia, you knew better. Like, you knew that if you just did it yourself, it would come out just fine. (laughs) You know? Because we all go through that process where we beat ourselves up. Like, why didn't you know better even when you didn't actually know better? Like, you can't know something you don't know, right? But it's, it's a protection defense mechanism for a lot of us, too, because of that trust. The, it, there is no trust that anybody else can do it better than us. And this is the only way we have control to keep things functioning into what we know to be healthy and working. So, yeah, and I don't and I don't feel like either one of us are saying you the cape isn't good. There's there's great aspects of yeah. having that superwoman you know, mentality and, you know, stereotype to some large degree. There is there's power behind it. There's confidence. There's things, there are great benefits behind it. I think what both of us are agreeing on, let me know if I'm wrong, is that there's a time and a place for it. And there's a time when it is detrimental to your well being to be holding on to it and not understanding how you're using it. Because you can use it in a positive way and you can use it in a negative way. Like even this week, I'm probably getting mad. Well, she'll never hear this. I ain't going to worry about this. My aunt is a perfect example of someone who is using it in the worst freaking fucking way. So my aunt is 86, 86 year old, living by herself. Mind you, hella strokes, like hella strokes. Could barely walk, barely move, use her hand, but she refuses to go to a home. She refuses to have someone come and help her. And so this week she had to have a surgery on her legs. And I'm like, sis, you need to have someone with you. Oh, no, I don't. I could do this all by myself. I'm like, but you can't get out of bed. You called me to come 30 minutes away to go get your medication and use some food from downstairs. Sis, that is a problem. Well, she's like, well, I'm just used to being by myself. And I'm like, no, it's not that you're used to being by yourself. Sorry, living in the city now. It's just like, hey, noise. (laughs) But it's like one of those things she's like, well, no one is going to be here. And I'm like, no, you have over the years literally yelled at all of us that I'm a strong black woman. I don't need you. I don't need you to the point where we're like, well, unless you call, we're going to assume you're good. And I think a lot of people assume someone's good. And so they're not asking, like you are fortunately have amazing friends who are like, hey, Jatia, can we help you? But I think most of us who are strong women, our friends assume that we're good because we're so, they're so used to us not asking for help that they're like, well, she's good. I don't need to ask for anything. And so then now we're resentful because no one's asking. Oh, but please believe they were they were saying this at the at the breakdown point, the meltdown point. Acting <laughs> 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 crazy in the streets point, right? But no, 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 no. I totally agree with you. I also feel like our power as women is that we make the world go round. Period. Cons- yes. And you I, I always think of like Clark Kent, right? He doesn't always function as Superman. Oh, great point. Yes. They never knew. Some people never even knew that he was Superman, right? Mm-hmm. Superman came out in time of need. Superman was not a consistent identity of his. Yeah. He had flaws. 
He had um, insecurities. He needed to wear glasses. He was blind as a bat, couldn't see without him. You know what I'm saying? So it's not this thing that has to be a consistent thing. It's not good all the time and it's not bad all the time. We just need to going back to control, learn how to control it so that it's best for us and for others. But that goes into identifying like what that X, Y, and Z is. So you can identify what your cape is and how to control it, right? So it's like, okay, if we're on a scooter, we know that's on two wheels. We know how to best drive it. If we're in a car, we know how to best drive that. If you're just learning how to ride a bike, you might need some training wheels. But you need to know what you're dealing with in order to control it so it's best for you and best for others. I love that. I love, love, love that. So how does someone get clarity on how to use it, what they're doing, and like, what is their cape? This definitely takes some self-reflection, some time with self. And a lot of times this time with self is the time we don't want to spend with ourselves because it's looking at our weaknesses. And as women, we don't like to be weak. Girl, girl, girl. (laughs) Like, I tell people all the time, I'm a thug, I don't cry. (laughs) But (laughs) At the same time. Thugs don't cry. Hashtag. <laughs> right. You know, like, but that's the, those are your tears or Windex for your soul. So it's, it's good to cry sometimes. I had to get it. So asking yourself, like, you know, we said earlier, you know, the who, the what, the why, right? But also sitting with yourself and then asking yourself, like, why do I feel the way I feel if I don't do this? Why do I feel the way I feel that makes me want to do this? Like, why do I want to show up for them and nobody asked me for my help? Why Why am I cooking this plate for a grown man that is capable and has a wife, i.e. like a sibling? Like, right, why, why am I doing this, right? Why? Nobody asked me. Nobody said they needed. Um, and then asking yourself, is this best for you? And giving yourself that grace to be able to say, no, it's not. And let's fix ourselves. And being better and not bootleg. Because a lot of times we would want to put a Band-Aid on it or not look at it and sweep it under the rug and be like, well, you know, like your aunt, for example, right? You tell her, like, you pushed us away to the fact where we would, but... And we do that a lot of times to people in our lives, friends, family, because I'm good. I don't need... And nobody wants to be around a rolling neck, attitude-infused, nasty person all the time. And even if we say it with... (laughs) (laughs) that's what they hear from you when they're offering because that might be their love language acts of service right and you're like nah mm -mm, I don't want that I don't want that translation I don't want your love I don't even like you (laughs) and I think people don't even realize that they could be coming across that way right you don't you really because you're not doing it from a malice place you're doing it from this is where this is how this is who I am. This is my identity. This is how I get my value. This is me. I am this, and everyone else is saying, mm, "Okay, B, I see exactly. you. <laughs> Don't think I'm gonna ask you again. F her." <laughs> right, and I mean, you know, I feel like we've been on the other side of that. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Where it's like I've been on both sides, and you don't always see the other side. When you're on the other side, because yeah, I've I've been my aunt. I mean, our birthdays are day apart. She's reminding me even more so now that I'm like, okay, when I'm older, when my niece and nephews take care of me, because I've already put them under contract to take care of me because I don't have any kids. (laughs) I'm not going to act that way because I don't want, I want people to know that I need help, but I'm learning to ask for help. I'm learning to see who I can trust. But right now, I will say, though I'm doing better at being aware of when to put my superwoman cape on and when I don't need it, I also have issues finding the right people to trust. Definitely. I mean, it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight by no means, right? Even like trusting yourself to make that decision as to who that person is, because we've trusted people in the past and we just knew like, we're good. That's the homie. They're going to ride or die. And you know, no, no, we were sadly mistaken. Yeah. Over time, we start to not even trust ourselves, even though that gut is like, hello, do you see me? Do you hear me? And we're like, "Mm -mm, no, mm -mm, we don't listen to the mind today and not the gut and skip all the way over the heart because she's really confused. 
But it's a process. It's going to take time. But unless you do that self-reflection, you wouldn't have been able to even see yourself in your aunt, right? And yeah. it's hard to look in the mirror, where, whether it's literally in the mirror or looking at a family member or a friend that is resembling this behavior. But you wouldn't be able to identify that behavior if you didn't sit in, you know. I always use the example of you're sitting in a pile of shit. And some people just sit there and they the smell becomes roses to them, but it's still a pile of shit. And others use that to create manure to nourish them so that they can grow instead of just sitting in this pile of shit. And so great point. Reflection is turning that into manure so that it literally can nourish you so you can grow from it. And you might not you might you will have those split rock moments where you're growing between these two rocks and it's painful and it sucks. But that sunshine on the other side, i.e. controlling, identifying our cape, helps us fly more efficiently and effectively. I think that's a great point. And, you know, part of my coaching program that's going to launch in January, it's called the AIR Journey. So it stands for Awaken, Interrupt, Redefine. And in that awakening part, you got to figure out where you are now. It's like kind of like when you're in a mall and you have one of those signs like you are here. But to figure out where you are here, you have to dig deep and get to the roots of your thoughts and your habits of where you've been. And I think a lot of this superwoman is like, how did you get to these thoughts where I can't trust people, that being a superwoman is part of my identity, that I need to do it all. Like you have to get to the roots of all of that. And then you can then figure out, okay, I'm here. I need to interrupt these habits and things. And I need to redefine what is being helpful to other people. What is being happy to me? What is being, what is being hello well to get to your sense of true peace and joy? But at first you have to awaken to where you are and what is blocking you. So you know me. <laughs> And right now I want to be like, let's go. Like, I love that. I absolutely love that. Because I say there's the ABCs, the clarity, acceptance, believing, and then connecting those dots, right? And so once you are awakened, you're interrupted, you redefine, like, I don't need y'all to accept this. Accept that it's possible. Accept that that can change and should change. So I absolutely love that. I'm excited for this coaching program for you. That's amazing. Absolutely. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. But yeah, I just think it's so true. I think we, I mean, a huge part of what everything is that I'm doing is this wellness movement to help women of color know that it is a choice to use the cape. And there's different ways you can use it. And there's negative ways we can use it. But at the end of the day, it's not this shackle, but it's something that can be easily removed. It's a beautiful accessory to empower you. But if you choose to wear it on a day when, girl, you know that accessory, don't go with those shoes. <laughs> For whatever part of your life, you know it's not it's not going to work out. It's not. But we don't, we're, it's, when it's tied to your identity, it's hard to realize that, oh, I'm, I'm, am I using it this way? Is this negatively affecting my life and my relationships and my career? But the only way to know that is if when you identify and work through those things and to have that self-reflection, which is why we're doing this month on self-reflection. Because if you're not reflecting on probably this core of your life, which is I am strong, I am capable, then yeah, you're, you're going to keep going through life wondering like why things aren't changing because you're not changing. You're not looking. Mm, that was really good. Because I know some people who swear they have the best fashion sense and it is horrible. <laughs> and no matter what their friends tell them, they're like, girl, this is fly. And they have on those Monica shoes from her first album drop. And it's 2020 and it's so unnecessary and unacceptable. But they're not listening because they don't want to do that self-reflection. So like you said, that accessory that could be great or ruin your outfit. That was a great analogy. Great analogy. So. I love this conversation and I love everything about you. I think one thing for me with you is like you just have a way of bringing clarity to what seems complex. But after talking to you, I always feel like, oh my gosh, she just makes it so easy. (laughs) This is so easy. And you have such great insights just in in general to helping 
women definitely, but I think people in general get a lot of great stuff from what you're doing. How can people work with you to dive deeper into getting clarity? Definitely. So I am on all platforms as Jatia Jones. Um, my website is jatiajones.com. So you can find me there. I hang out most of the time on Instagram. I just find it to be so much more fun. <laughs> but you can always also come and join us in the Clarity Circle. So that is basically where we get together and we are committed and intentional about getting clear. And I'm devoted to helping you do that. My, my life's mantra is help me help you help us. I don't think that we should do it alone. I think it works a whole lot faster if we do it together. Can you build a house by yourself? Well, sure. But do you want to and do you have to? And you can do it a lot faster and better quality if you have help. So come and join us. Um, but yeah, you can find me everywhere, Jatia Jones. I love it. And so I ask, because if you've listened to the podcast, you know, I ask a couple of questions at the end. Um, so you probably have a, a edge on any other guests who are like, oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> so these are quick fire questions not like, let me think it through for 20 minutes. Uh, so the first question is, what does living hella well mean to you? On my terms. Aisle or window? Aisle. What is always in your travel bag? Loss. Hmm. I don't know why I hmm, that. I was like, oh, <laughs> hmm. I've been watching a little bit too much Married at First Sight, but that's a whole other conversation. I love <laughs> uh, last question is, what advice would you give to your younger self in terms of how to take better care of herself and make sure that she is knowing and understanding that self-care is not a luxury, but it is an act of resistance and it is required to thrive? In short and sweet, who going to check you, boo? Do you? Because nobody else is going to do it for you. And you can't help others the way your heart desires if you are not here and around to do that. So do you put your oxygen mask on first and truly help others? Because even though it doesn't make sense in your head, if you pass out an aisle before you put your mask on first, you can't help anybody. I love it. Because we had to have an episode you saying at least who's going to check you, boo, which is my favorite Jatia <laughs> line. I'm like, I feel like you need a shirt. If you don't have one already, this says it. I need shirts, I need mugs, I need something <laughs> or another because... I say that in my head all the time because of you. And it reminds me that when I'm shooting, I would say, oh, you should all of ourselves. Like, I should do this. I should do that. Just one day I'm going to do my own process that probably shouldn't be seen with that love. But yes, one day I will be creating shirts and other things like that with that because it, for me, it, it's such an important thing. But I always remind myself when I'm shooting on myself, I hear you in the background, like, who's going to check you, boo? Girl, this is like, I, I, I try to only give life lessons, right? And I know when people meet me, they're like, oh, she's 12. No, I'm a lot older. The gray is hiding. But like, this is what I really wish somebody, because I'm hard headed too, but could have drilled home to me. Like, who? who? Who says? Because we raise our girls to be like, you can be anything. And then they get older and they're like, no, but in this bubble, you can be anything. And I want people to go around and pop these bubbles. Like, who going to check you? Who? Like, seriously. And we need to do that to ourselves because we put more constraints on ourselves than we do on other people who probably need it to have access to us. So, yes, I'm glad that you use that in your shoulda moments. And I'm going to use that because, you know, girl, it's, it's, a, it's a process. <laughs> it's a process. I still have my date. And that was a word. That was a word. Thank you so much again for being on this show. I appreciate you. I hope you guys got something out of this. Definitely make sure to follow Jatia on Instagram. She is amazing at Instagram. But also, you know, if you got some aha from this, you know, drop it, you know, a DM to either one of us or, you know, hashtag or what am I looking for the word? Tag us in the post. You know, I'm tired some days. <laughs> Tag us in a post on Twitter, whatever, or any, you know, food for thoughts that you guys got. And yeah, other than that, I look forward to talking to you guys next week. We have another amazing guest coming next week. And we're going to continue on this month of self-reflection, um, getting us together for 2021. Because remember, who is going to check you? Boo. Love Ooh. you guys. <laughs> Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. 
make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram, and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like hella, hella, hella love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening, and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.